And one thing that I wanted to do was to highlight or summarize some of the key steps because I feel that the uh, following the process, you can get a little confused at times. And so if you'll allow me, I'm going to summarize uh, solving uh, this problem uh, where you have a let's remind ourselves of the problem so we have moist air in a rigid closed tank it's hot it's high pressure and it has 40 percent relative humidity and then the tank is cooled cooled to a certain temperature uh, and you're asked to calculate questions things like the final pressure in the tank the final relative humidity final humidity ratio and the heat transfer during the process this temperature in one part we had it at 60 degrees C and then we changed it so it went from 80 to 60 and then 80 to 40 and we found the results were very different when you go all the way to 40 degrees C because some of the water vapor condenses and when it condenses it takes a lot of heat transfer to condense vapor so the Q the answer to part D was much larger when you went from 80 to 40 versus 80 to 60. So here are the key equations. I'll try and put them in a column format. You had the initial pressure of 400 kPa. Then you had the initial temperature of 80 degrees C, and you're going to every now and then need it in Kelvin using the ideal gas equation. And the relative humidity was 40%. These were all given, true? You can look up the saturation pressure at 80 degrees C, and you find that that's a whopping 47.4 kPa. And then you can calculate, let's say, just uh, calculate the vapor pressure initially in the tank, which is the product of the relative humidity and the saturation pressure. So we get that it's right at 19 kilopascal because it was at 40% relative humidity. Then you can calculate the pressure of the dry air initially in the tank. That's the pressure in the tank minus the pressure of the vapor in the tank at state one or the initial state. And so it's 381 kPa. And then you can calculate the mass of the dry air in the tank, which is the ideal gas equation, pressure of the dry air, volume of the tank, molar mass of dry air, R bar T. That's an R bar T. And we calculated 9.403 kilograms of dry air. We calculate the humidity ratio initially in the tank, 0.622, the vapor pressure over the dry air pressure state one. And that comes in at 0 0.03094. And then the vapor that's in the tank using the ideal gas equation, partial pressure of the vapor, the total volume, molar mass of the vapor, 18.02, R bar T, all at state one, and you get 0 0.291 kilograms. Okay, how do we then jump and start calculating at state two? Either state two is 60 degrees or 40 degrees. Well, one way to do it is just to go ahead and assume that the vapor all stays in in the vapor state. All the water stays in the vapor state. If you do that, you'll find that P2 is equal to P1 times T2 over T1 from the ideal gas equation. Just assume it's all ideal gas, air and vapor, initially at state one, as well as finally at state two. And you calculate that the, the final pressure does go down because it's cooling. This is for a temperature of 60 degrees C and uh, 333 kPa. I'll show it also for 40 degrees C. And then what is the saturation pressure P sat at 60 degrees C? Well, that is 19.94 uh, kPa. And so the vapor pressure at state two, assuming it all stays ideal gas, is just like the above equation for the total pressure, PV1 T2 over T1, and it comes right in at like 17.9 kPa. And then the partial pressure of dry air at 2. A similar equation is uh, 
359.5 kPa. So that's the same way that the, the pressures are changed. If they're always ideal gas, you calculate then the relative humidity, phi2, which is PV2 divided by P sat at 60 degrees. And we find that it's real close to 90%, 89.7%. Okay? If you came in here and changed it for 40 degrees, so T2 was 40 degrees C, and then what is that, 273? That's at a, uh, I didn't write that down. What is 40 and 273? Uh, three, 313, that's right, 313 Kelvin. Um, what you find is P sat at 40 degrees C would be much, let me look at some of these notes right here, P sat at uh, 40 degrees C, right, much lower. And then when you calculate the relative humidity, you'll find that it exceeds 100%. It can't be all vapor. You can't be all vapor at state two if it's 40 degrees C. It can be all vapor if it's 60 degrees C. So let me jump to the Excel file. Maybe the Excel file will make it a little easier to see. So here are kind of the, the givens, the given, the given, the given, kind of light, laid out as I read it to you for state one, 80 degrees C. If you go to 60 degrees C, you calculate, end up calculating the relative humidity is about 90%. The partial pressure of the dry air is here. The humidity ratio is the same. It doesn't change. The amount of vapor to dry air doesn't change going from 80 to 60 degrees C. <clears throat> and uh, you, you can get look up the values of use of G and use of G at the different temperatures. Use specific heat for the dry air. Calculate how much it takes to cool the dry air, how much it takes to cool the water vapor. Because there's so much less water vapor, it's, it's a lower amount and it's 143 kilojoules needs to be removed of heat transfer. 95% of that is to cool the dry air, and about 5% of it's to cool the moisture. Now, it, it is a small amount to cool the moisture, but look at humidity ratio is about 3%. So it's only 3, three kilograms of vapor per kilogram of dry air. So, so uh, this looks all about right. But what happens if you cool it from 80 to 40. If we try the same process, what you find is that you calculate a relative humidity of 227%. It's impossible. So at that point, you know some of it's condensed. And now you have to figure out how much condensed. So I didn't calculate the rest of this. It's just that I knew the saturation pressure at 60. Whoops, that should say 40 right here. That's a comment. That should be 40, okay? Let me fix that. Let me hit 40. All right. But let's jump now to this case. So what we do is you say at state two, it's going to be assumed to be 100% relative humidity. Okay, if you assume that it's 100% relative humidity, then you know that the saturation pressure and the partial pressure vapor are the same. It's 7.38. So the dry air uh, uh, changes like an ideal gas, like it did in the first case. But the total pressure now is calculated by summing the vapor partial pressure and the dry air pressure. So it actually dropped a little more rapidly than if it would have stayed all in the ideal gas, because some of it condensed, some of the vapor condensed. And um, you can still see that the mass of the dry air didn't change, but when you calculate the mass that's in the vapor state, it's, it's, it's gone down from 0.298 to 0.1278 kilograms. So there's only 44% of what was what started out is in the vapor state, and this is the amount of liquid. Just looking at the equation, you take the difference between those two, right? 
and then that's 56% of the initial vapor. So, so quite a bit of the water has condensed. And you have to look up use of F for that uh, temperature of 40 degrees C, use of G for that temperature. And when you calculate the total amount of cooling required, it's a lot higher, 655 kilojoules. And 41% uh, of it is attributed to cooling the air. Cooling the vapor that stays in the vapor state, only 1%. But 58% is associated with condensing the, the uh, vapor. So going from use of G all the way to use of F. That's a large change in internal energy for that mass that was is now in the liquid state. Uh, I may, may have changed some numbers here. I may have gone down to 30 degrees earlier, but here I, I just went 20 degree increments. So, so if you go 80 to 60 or 80 to 40, it's a 20 degree change or a 40 degree change. Helps put it in, in perspective. But the perspective, something to glean is, is this is a, a significant amount. And they would call that, they would call this predominantly the sensible heating or the sensible cooling of the air. This is the latent cooling or the latent 